Formula 1 returns to China for the first time since 2019, and the F1 grid is not happy about it. The last time anyone on the grid raced this track, it was in the old F1 cars, on tiny tires, and the track was in far better condition. Big changes have happened to the Shanghai International Circuit, and with a sprint race thrown in as well, it could be a chaotic weekend. Today, I'm going to check out the changes to the track, the massive impact they could have on the driver's safety, and why this is the worst possible time for a sprint weekend. So, don't go anywhere. A lot has changed since Formula 1 last drove in China. The cars are vastly different. The tyres have also undergone some huge changes, and the F1 pecking order is completely mixed up. The last time we were here, Lewis Hamilton was on top of the world, dominating the sport with spectacular ease, while Max Verstappen was really starting to emerge as a driver for the future, not that we knew how good he would be back then. Both Lewis and Red Bull have significant history here. In 2009, Sebastian Vettel won Red Bull's first ever race here, proving for the first time that they weren't just some energy drink company running an expensive ad campaign. Two years earlier, in 2007, Lewis Hamilton threw away what would have been an astonishing debut season F1 title by beaching his car in a gravel trap at the pit lane entry, gifting Kimi Raikkonen the World Drivers' Championship by one point. Unknown at the time, it would be Ferrari's last. With China essentially closed for the last four years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the 2024 Chinese Grand Prix is a homecoming of sorts. After all, the track is one of the longest standing ones, having hosted races continuously from 2004 until the truncated 2020 season. Over those four years, the track has seen very little action, so to get it ready for the return of Formula 1 racing, a lot of changes have happened. Oddly, the track surface has been painted, presumably to try and simulate the layer of rubber which normally adds grip to a track surface. With barely any action on the circuit for the last four years, the track surface must have been in appalling condition. But the question is, has the painting been done as a final piece of finishing, or to cover up a terrible surface? Until the cars hit the track, no one knows. The very unusual preparation means that the 20 F1 drivers will be heading into the unknown. Well, apart from Valtteri Bottas, who's been getting laps in on his bike, though I'm not sure becoming the local legend of the circuit on Strava will equate to an F1 win. To add to the difficulty of this completely unknown track surface, it is a sprint weekend, which means there'll only be 60 minutes of practice time on Friday, or Thursday night if you're in the US. This means that the teams will only have 60 minutes to try and work out how the track will treat their tyres, and setup mistakes are going to be likely. More on the outrage of that decision in a few minutes. Shanghai's long, loaded corners, coupled with the abrasive track surface, have traditionally made the venue one of the hardest on tyres. Shockingly though, despite there being brand new tyres and a brand new track surface, official supplier Pirelli was unable to visit the venue ahead of time to gain information on the track surface, and has elected to bring with it the middle three rubber compounds. Based on simulations and past data, the tyres are subjected to lateral and longitudinal forces here that fall into the medium category, with the outside of the tyre, especially on the left-hand side of the car, wearing the most, the Italian company noted in its event preview. Five years ago, the 13-inch tyres were still in use, fitted to the previous generation of car, which had a flat floor and completely different aerodynamics to the current car. In fact, for the drivers, the teams, and indeed for Pirelli, it's pretty much a matter of starting from scratch, given that the references are very vague. This really is going into the unknown for F1 teams. Like wet weather, uncertainty can act as a leveler for car performance, meaning an exceptional drive from any driver could create some surprising results. A former winner in China, Daniel Ricciardo is one of several drivers to have passed comment on the revised surface for this weekend. It looks like they painted the track or they've done something to the surface, he said. Apparently, they've just painted it or something, so I don't know how the track is going to change, if it's going to be the same or super slippery. Ferrari's Charles Leclerc added, It depends a lot on the type of paint they used. That could cause different issues or have no issues at all. I hope it's the latter. That will be the case. For now, it's very difficult to predict, he added. I've only seen pictures. I haven't gone around the track yet. I don't think it's the same everywhere, which might not be great. 
Formula 1 engineers look at the track surface and assess its macro and micro roughness when trying to decide setups and tyre choices. Macro roughness looks at the layout of the track surface, the gaps between the stones which are set in bitumen, and how much those stones stick out. The more sticky-outy the stones are, the higher the macro roughness. And sticky-outy is a technical term, I promise. Imagine it like sandpaper. The rougher your sandpaper is, the bigger the particles of sand are, and the more they stick out. Micro roughness looks at the actual texture of the stones in the surface itself. These can get polished smooth over time with lots of racing. What painting the surface might do is fill the gaps between the stones, reducing the macro roughness, and coat the stones in a smooth layer, reducing the micro roughness. Over the weekend, that paint will probably wear away, increasing the roughness of the circuit and therefore increasing the grip. How much that changes, though, is a huge unknown. Drivers might find that with little grip on Friday, their tires wear a lot and they have to set the car up to compensate for that. By Sunday's Grand Prix, though, the grip level could have ramped up as the paint has been stripped away and the roughness of the circuit has increased. But no one really knows for sure, which is very exciting. What the teams might fear is a repeat of the 2020 Turkish Grand Prix, where a combination of wet weather and a new, very slick track surface turned the Grand Prix from a Formula 1 race into a drift exhibition with more donuts on show than a police station. The changes go further than that, though. Each race, the race director gives notes to the teams on the upcoming race. In addition to standard notes, each event brings with it specific instructions pertinent to the venue, including any changes since F1 last visited. Interestingly, the painting of the surface isn't included. What is on the list, though, is the removal of bumps at turn 1, 3, and 8, repairs to cracks in the pit lane, changes to runoff areas, removal of sausage curbs and artificial grass, and the addition of new brake markers. The one of particular interest to fans should be the change to the runoff area at the final corner, which has gone from being astroturf to gravel, which means any track limit violations there will have much more serious consequences. The choice to have a sprint race at the circuit has shocked many of the drivers. With so little recent experience on the track, and the track having seen so little use over the past four years, the teams would want much more than 60 minutes of testing to get their cars dialed in for maximum performance. Max Verstappen's been a long-term critic of sprints, and this latest decision hasn't helped to ease his anger. It's very smart to do that, Verstappen sarcastically told the media. No, I think it's not great to do that, because when you've been away from a track for quite a while, you never know what you're going to experience. So it would have been better to have a normal race weekend there. As the current dominant force in Formula 1, Max can only lose out from having less time to get his car set up before the Grand Prix. Any mistake or missed opportunity by Red Bull will give the teams behind them the chance to close the gap. In Australia, we saw how a Red Bull setup mistake cost them big time. Sergio Perez could only find the pace for fifth place finish, and never looked any better than that. While Max retired early due to a brake issue, the Ferraris always looked like they had the measure of him due to the RB20 not being able to look after its tyres. With a completely unknown track surface and the SF24 naturally kinder to its tyres, a repeat of that race is possible. Max did admit that the added uncertainty could make for an interesting race, but clearly wasn't happy about it. On the other hand, it probably spices things up a bit more, and that's maybe what they would like to see. But purely from a driving perspective, performance perspective of the sport, I think it's not the smartest thing to do. While the drivers and teams may be dreading the race this weekend, for us fans, it has the potential to be an absolute thriller. Are you excited to see what the changes to the Shanghai track do to the teams? Is this a chance for Ferrari to pick up another win and close the gap to Red Bull? Let me know your predictions in the comments down below, and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.